Hi everybody, today I'm gonna to talk about the five rules or guidelines that I have when I am thinking about buying a collectible. Let's get to it. So a lot of people ask me, you know, should I buy this, should I buy that? And uh, it's always difficult because you know, it's your own budget, what do you like? You know, where are we in the life cycle of that particular collectible? And so um, I have these five rules that I think about, um, and uh, I've done it for so long, I almost kind of do it intuitively, but let's go through them. So the first one is I rarely buy a collectible when it's at its all-time high. Uh, so, you know, for example, right now, Todd, I think, is at its all-time high, which is an amazing, you know, like 13,000 gems. And so... It's probably going to go up from there, as we know, but I would not buy it at this price point. I would wait for some sort of gem squeeze or something to happen to pull it back down before I would buy. And so when I'm looking and using some of these tools like Ecomi Wiki or Rebel Duck or there's a lot of variety of them, I try and look at those uh, charts and I rarely buy, if ever, at an all-time high. Um, now there are exceptions and it, what it really does though is prevents me from, you know, FOMO into anything. And, you know, really when you're scared and you're like, oh, this is going to go to a million dollars, uh, that's when you tend to buy at these all time highs. And generally speaking, almost every time it's been a mistake for me. So that's something I try not to do. So that's the first one. The second one is uh when i go to buy something right away if i can't answer some of those questions like what is the all-time high what is the price action over the last seven days uh that tells me i need to do more research so the second one i have for you is make sure you analyze that collectible and understand the price action i have you know a couple of those questions that i want to be, know is you know is it an all-time high and um, do I, is there something coming soon, like another huge collectible that would cause a gem squeeze so that particular collectible would go down? I ask all those questions and I do my research before I buy. Uh, whenever I am looking at something that's going to drop, if I, I try to look at other drops that have happened with the same mint number in the past and try and guess maybe at what I think a price is going to be, and I rarely buy within that first 24 hours. And you've heard me say that before because prices are inflated, weird things happen. So something to think about. Do your research. The third one, I want to know how this particular collectible fits in. In other words, is it a first appearance? Is it a first edition? Is it part of a set? And is it the um, key pivotal piece of that set so often the most rare piece so for example if you look at the mighty marvels uh you know the captain america one the red skull is you know the kind of most rare and pivotal piece of that set same thing with if you look at the mighty marvels with uh the fantastic four the doctor doom one so if that's the most critical piece that may be one you want to try to go after because, of course, you know that will be difficult for other people to get to. So that's going to drive the price up more. Something to think about. But I want to know if this specific piece is a first appearance or a critical piece in a set. Um, and so it's not that I don't buy things that are not first appearances. But if I'm going to pay a lot and invest a lot or stack something, I want to make sure it has one of those characteristics. The number four one I have for you is what catalyst could cause this particular collectible to go up? So in other words, is there a movie coming? Is there a show coming? Is there a particular audience? People say Ultraman, we're waiting for Asia. So is there an audience that's, or set of buyers that are going to come into VV that are really, really going to want this specific uh, collectible? So what catalysts are going to make this uh, collectible, collectible go up? Or have we already seen all those catalysts? So in other words, the movie has already come out. And now what's going to make it go up? So for example, one of the ones I was concerned about was Amazing Spider-Man number three, the first appearance of Dr. Octopus. So we just saw Doc Ock in a movie. Is he going to be in the next movie? We may not see him again for a number of years. 
what is the catalyst to make that particular comic continue to go up or really, really jump. Now, that specific comic is such an iconic comic. I think it slowly goes up. All kinds of Spider-Man people want, you know, Spider-Man collectors want that specific comic. So it's always going up. So it's, a, it's probably a good, uh, you know, investment. But that's the type of thing I think about. That's why Fantastic Four, the Mighty Marvels and Fantastic Four number one, could be a potentially good investment because the movie is going to happen most likely in the next you know, year or two. All those characters are going to be front and center, and that could really push you know, that comic and those collectibles up. So what are the catalysts? That's my number four. And number five is what happens if everything goes wrong and you have to keep the collectible, are you going to be happy with it? So I ask myself a lot, you know, that question, uh, especially if I'm buying things that I don't know a lot about. So one of the ones that I was really late to the party on was partner statue, which I was able to get for a relatively uh, low price, considering it's really, really exploded now. But um, when it came out, I didn't buy it. I didn't get it on the, I tried for the drop. I didn't get it on the drop. And then I waited maybe a week or two before I purchased it. People that I knew that influenced me in terms of, you know, convinced me basically that this is a good investment but i'm not a person who knows a lot about disney i've been learning a lot about it and totally i'm beginning to understand some of the fandom that is around it but i asked myself if i spend a bunch of money in this and i can't sell it later am i going to be happy with that and i was because it's such an iconic piece and uh and even if it didn't you know go like it has which is it's literally exploded i think it might be 40,000 gems at this point or something like that, you know, completely amazing. I would be happy to keep it. It's an incredible piece. Now, the ones that I did buy from those golden moments that I would have kept forever anyways were the Star Wars ones. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Elsa, I like Elsa. The the Mickey hat, all those Avengers logo, Iron Man, all of those I would have been happy to keep and I actually got was able to get a lot of those. I only got one on the drop, which is C-3PO. All the others I had to buy in the secondary market. Luckily, all those have really gone up in value. But that is a question I always ask myself. If I buy this particular comic or collectible and I get stuck with it, am I going to be okay with that? And sometimes the answer is no. And so sometimes I actually don't, you know, I don't, I pass on it. I don't get it. And so those are the five things that I have for you. Um, I definitely think about those five things when I, before I purchase something. So I encourage you to do it. I appreciate you all for watching. Take care. 